Prokop from St. Paul, Minnesota. And I'm speaking to you today because on August 1st, 1979, I had an abortion and wish someone could told me then that I would someday regret this decision. A dear friend of mine had told me at this time that she thought this decision would be the best decision of my life and I could go on with my life as it was. And that was a lie. A lie she believed too. I made this decision because I didn't see a way out. I was pregnant from a one night stand and very ashamed of what I had done and wanted to hide it from my family. My family was very close and my parents had gone through two um, unwanted, or pregnancies with my brothers when they weren't married and it broke my parents' heart and I couldn't bear to tell them this one. When told I was pregnant at the health department, their nurse had asked me what I wanted to do and I asked an abortion, I guess, and no other option was suggested to me. I was scared and alone. I did not know what to do and she just handed me a number to an abortion clinic. I don't remember much about the abortion experience itself, other, very, other than feeling very numb inside and crying most of the night after the procedure. As I look back, I can see how my abortion affected my life. For, for, for the first years, I could not hold jobs. I had poor self-esteem and made poor relationship decisions that sabotaged my dreams of marriage and having children. I turned to food as my companion. Fifteen years after the abortion at 38, I was signal and found myself pregnant again, wanting that atonement child. Unfortunately, that pregnancy ended in a miscarriage. No one had told me that abortion leads to miscarriage in more cases than not. And that started a downward spiral of depression and just finding no purpose in life. I had felt I had been better off dead and no one would miss me. The worst time of the year was around, was around my birthday, which is right after Christmas, and it always reminded me of my empty arms and the hope of ever having children. And I remember on my 45th birthday, being alone and feeling rejected and crying out, I cannot live this way anymore. I could not handle the pain of my life. I knew I could not live another year that I, with this pain I had in my heart. I knew I needed to get some counseling, go on antidepressants, do whatever it took. The next year, my oldest niece had asked me to go to church with her, and she and I had always been at odds with each other, so I thought this might be a way to bridge the gap between us, not really thinking I would get anything out of church. Gratefully, gratefully, I was wrong about that. And I remember sitting through a service on forgiveness and crying the whole time, wondering how Christ could ever forgive me. I could not even forgive myself. Abortion was the unforgivable sin. The church was offering an Alpha course in the fall, and I thought that could be a tool for me. And at that course, I found forgiveness I need from the Holy Spirit. And thankfully, that year, Christ became my counselor and the Holy Spirit, my antidepressant. Hallelujah. I had the most peaceful and blessed Christmas and birthday that year. But in January, I realized I wanted to mourn the loss of my, my baby. And then by chance, I had picked up a brochure at church wanting an address off of it so I could donate to the pregnancy center. And the next day, when I looked at the brochure, I found out it was for a post-abortion healing group. And this was 22 years after my abortion, and I never knew a group like this existed. And I called, and they had one opening left, and I knew God was telling me to go and be healed. And was, went through a group and was able to share with other women like me and learn why I always felt alone and rejected most of my adult life. I also learned that my baby, Megan Ann, was not a sin, but the abortion and the sex that was related to it was. With Christ at my side, I was able to heal the pain 
grieve, the mo grieve and mourn the loss of Megan and David, my children. And after 25 years, I was finally able to tell my parents, who were pro-life most of my, all of my adult life. And guess what? They grieve for me, they forgave me, and are very loving and supportive. And this had taught me to trust in them and the Lord even more. I am now over 50 without a child of my own to hold in my arms. But because of the promise of Christ, I feel I now belong and I have the promise of meeting my children in heaven and that I am a beloved child of God. I will always regret the choice to abort my, children, my child. But Christ has given me purpose with the opportunity to help other wounded women wounded by abortion so that they do not need to find out by chance that they can find hope and healing through him who loved us first. This is why I am silent no more. Thank you.